By the end of this clip, you should be comfortable deriving the autocovariance function of a moving average process with QLEX. So we have the definition of the MAQ process, which we've seen before, where the shocks epsilon t are assumed to be white noise. And we're going to use these assumptions to derive this autocovariance function. So what is the autocovariance function? Well, from before, it's just the covariance of yt and yt, k pairs back, for all periods in the past, k equal 1, back forever. So we need to derive the covariance yt, yt minus 1, yt, yt minus 2, and so on. And notice that it's a function of k. So we have to derive the covariance of all legs into the past, not just one or two legs, but all of them. And in most cases, this is quite simple. The, co the covariance takes a relatively simple form. Okay. Also to note, we assume that yt is stationary. So this covariance doesn't depend upon time. It just depends on how far back k, the gap into the past. Okay, so we're going to derive this now for the MAQ process. To give some intuition then, we'll firstly take the MA2 model. So take the case where Q equals 2, so that YT goes back only to epsilon T minus 2. And first off, let's just look at deriving the covariance of YT and YT minus 1. So first to note then, looking at yt, and we can write yt minus 1 again, lagging all elements back 1, we can see that the only terms which appear in both yt and yt minus 1, the only shocks, are epsilon t minus 1 and epsilon t minus 2. So the covariance, the only things which co-move between the two are yt and yt minus 1. All the other shocks are in different time periods, and therefore they're uncorrelated. Likewise then, looking at the covariance yt, yt minus 2, Again, we can see, writing them both out, the only term which appears in yt, the only shock which appears in yt and yt minus 2, is epsilon t minus 2. And finally then, looking at the yt, yt minus 3, we can see that there's no shock which enters both yt and yt minus 3. So all the shocks in yt are uncorrelated with all the shocks in yt minus 3. And therefore, the covariance must be not, because they're all uncorrelated. And this should be the same at yt minus 4, yt minus 5, and so on. For an MAQ process, any lag after 2, they have to be correlated because there's no concurrent shocks. This is the case for any MAQ model. For an MAQ model, there can only be covariance up to lag Q. After that, all the covariances are not because there's no concurrent shocks. So we just have to derive the covariance for the MAQ up to lag Q, and then from then on in, they're all equal to not from the same intuition. Okay, so we're now going to derive the general covariance function for a general MAQ process. Okay, so we want to work out the covariance of yt and yt minus k for any k less than q. Because we, we know for any lag greater than q, for an MAQ, the covariance is not. Okay, so firstly then we just state the, put the definition of the covariance function. Then we can simplify down. So we always start with the definition of the thing we're trying to derive. We can then note that the expectation of yt and yt minus k, we derived a previous clip. We showed that they were equal to alpha. So if we go to the next line by noting the mean of yt and yt minus k above alpha. We then literally just plug in yt minus alpha from the definition of the MAQ on the previous slide. And again, we do the same thing for yt minus k, lagging back everything we saw previous back k period. And again, we just substitute in yt minus alpha, and then again, lag back k period, yt minus k minus alpha. So we now want to do what we did before in the MA2. We want to find the concurrent shocks in yt minus alpha and yt minus k minus alpha. So again, we put, it, we put the process into what's called tabular form. So we write to re re rewrite what we had above, but place them such that we can see which shocks are concurrent. So again, do the dotted green lines, epsilon t, epsilon t minus 1, down to epsilon t minus k. And we can put down line by line which shocks are, appear in both. So we can see that the first shock, which appears in yt, epsilon t minus k, is... The first, shock which appear, the first shock which appear in both is epsilon t minus k. So yt minus k starts epsilon t minus k. And then we can see the number of common shocks go from epsilon t minus k down to epsilon t minus q. These are the only ones which appear in both, y, the both yt and yt minus k. And the, num the number of shocks 
between here, the gap between them, well, is just Q minus K. And that's why in the second second line, it goes for the for the Y T minus K, it goes epsilon T minus K plus dot 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 theta Q minus K times epsilon T minus Q. Because for the Y T minus K, it's the first Q minus K shocks which are correlated with the last Q minus K shocks of Y T. So we've picked out then the concurrent shocks in both. This then simplifies the derivation then of the covariance because when we expand out this expectation all the other cross product terms are going to have expectation not by white noise three so the only terms which come out are these concurrent shocks very similar to what we saw for the ma2 so by white noise three then correlatedness these are the only these are the only terms which come out non-zero and then finally then we note that all these epsilon t minus k squared dot 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 down to epsilon t minus q squared these are just all the variance of epsilon which by the white noise 2 are all equal to sigma squared okay so then we can simplify again we can take the sigma squared out it's equal to it's constant across and therefore we get this sum here so this is it this is then the autocovariance of an maq process which you can write in this simplified form beneath and we can verify the two are equal by expanding it out. So if we evaluate this sum S equal naught, we get theta naught, which is 1, times theta k. Then it evaluate S equal 1, we get theta 1, theta k plus 1. And carry on, go right up to, it sums down to q minus k. Going down then, we're going to get theta q minus k. And then theta q minus k plus k, which is theta q. So we just well, all we've done is shown by expanding out this sum, it's equal to the above. Okay, got S equal not down to S equal K. Okay. And that's it. And all the other all the other covariances for any lag greater than K are equal to not.